promoters of uh, the private equity promoters of Hexaware has gone ahead and decided to delist uh, the company. Mr. Arsh Krishna, CEO at Hexaware, is now with us. Sir, promoters have accepted the offer at 475 for delisting Hexaware Technologies. What is the rationale for delisting? What does it mean for the company? So, I mean, what it means for Hexaware Technologies in a word uh, is in terms of how, what it means for our customers, what it means for our employees, in a word, is nothing. What we were doing before, our strategy, our focus, talent development, how we engage with customers, nothing changes. Now, in spite of it, there is a delisting process that happened. Um, that's because it gives, you know, um, somebody you like a share, you want to buy, uh, if you think it's going to give you great returns, you want to buy as much of the share as you can afford to buy. And that's really the rationale uh, for the delisting. And of course, it potentially gives us, you know, the ability to do some things that, um, you know, we, we could not do if you were a public company. But for the most part, what we're going to do is no different from what we would have done if you were a listed company. Uh, the process of delisting is now complete. Any processes remaining ahead? Well, the, what happens next and the process itself is laid out by SEBI and, you know, the promoters will follow the law and the regulation to the letter. And so, the, you know, the next several weeks, I think there will be, you know, the actual transaction and money passing, but that's all laid out as per the SEBI regulation. All right. Uh, Mr. Sri Krishna, uh, Accenture has guided for better growth in the second half of FY21. HCL Technologies has gone ahead and revised their guidance upwards. How are you seeing demand uh, environment shaping up in light of what your peers are doing? We think our business is doing as well as it has, and it's on a roll. Um, you know, our last quarter results were the best in the industry. And at that time, we said, you know, it shrunk by 1%, but 1% was the lowest shrinkage in the quarter. That was in revenue. And our profits improved by 250 bips last quarter. We said, actually, that we will grow uh, through the rest of the year. Um, in fact, through the quarter, our outlook has only improved and improved continuously. Um, I, I think as the recovery happens globally, uh, some of the first dollars that customers are releasing will go into tech spend. So I, I think you will see that demand environment is very strong. Uh, that's what we see, and clearly that's demonstrated by others' commentary as well. So, you know, we think demand environment is going to be very strong for the industry. Okay, uh, moving on, can you tell us how the demand environment has been for various verticals? We also understand that there has been good demand for digital adoption, new technologies. What's your view on both of these factors? Sure. I mean, so you asked a question about what verticals. So, you know, I, I think there are some trouble verticals that are going to be slow to recover, right? Um, the, the biggest impacted vertical is travel and associated businesses, hospitality. Um, so those those are slow to recover. They probably won't recover for another year and a half. Um, you know, outside that, we see most industries on a solid recovery path. Like retail is the other one that is slow to recover, but, but outside those, uh, we see most industries on a very solid recovery path. Now, in terms of the services you referred to, you know, digital, I mean, digital has many components to it. I think, you know, digital as it, as it translates to how do you transform customer experiences? How do you deliver jaw-dropping customer experience? That's the biggest priority for customers. But the moment you say you want to do that and, and, you have you realize that you can't do that with all your legacy systems and you have to transform the legacy systems to deliver true digital transformation to customers and that legacy transformation often takes the shape and form of migrating to cloud so actually the the biggest positive movement we're seeing is a digital leapfrogging if you will people are trying to do what they've done in years in in months and the migration to cloud and 
creating a solid foundation for digital transformation and then creating great digital products and experiences for the customers. Um, on the other hand, there's also a significant focus on increased deployment of automation because COVID is not past us. So there's still a strong desire to save money for customers. Everybody's Q2 results was good. I'm not talking about our industry, I'm talking about our customers. But now they're thinking about how can we sustain that financial performance? And one of the ways for them to sustain the financial performance is to reduce cost in a more sustainable way. And automation is the best way to do it. So we think those are the three areas, the experience transformation, leapfrogging the cloud, and sustainable cost reduction for automation. Those are the three areas that we see the biggest spend from customers. Well, so let's talk about the deal pipeline as well. So, you know, most of the companies that we have spoken to at CL Tech in their quarterly results said that a quarterly update said that deal pipeline is looking very strong. What are you picking up in terms of deal pipeline? What is the sense you're getting in terms of deals that are getting awarded? Yeah, like I said, you know, we even at the beginning of the quarter, we said we're going to have growth in this quarter. And like I said, through the quarter, our outlook has only got better. Right now, I can't be more specific.